And I wanted to talk about uh, the coaching setup at Leinster because, I mean, even though it has been 12 months since that Claremont defeat, it's still the this, this sort of mental steel that, that uh, Stuart Lancaster and Leo Cullen above him have sort of implemented there is remarkable. Even over the space of a year to get to a point where you're, you seem indestructible compared to what you were in, in France this time last year. Like, obviously they have a very strong dynamic, but are you surprised by how far Leinster have come on in, in the intervening 12 months? Well, I think Lancaster's always been a coach. Even with England, he was massive on that culture. You know, you think of things like when, when he wrote to all the players' families before the 2015 World Cup and got parents, wives to tell the players how much it meant to them that they were playing for England. Little things like that that he's, he's really conscientious with. And I think he's brought that to Leinster where Johnny Sexton had said a while ago that the culture probably wasn't as strong as it needed to be. Um, and they've had a huge focus on this kind of brothers mentality this season. I think it's been most apparent in their defence, which we spoke about before the semi-final, where guys' work rate is, is through the roof for each other. Um, and clearly they're enjoying that side of the game because they can show work rate for each other. So culture off the pitch has been strong, really good testament to the work of the coaches. And I think in all of this, like Lancaster gets such positive press, deservedly, brilliant coach. But Leo Cullen actually going out and getting a guy like that to come in was a very selfless act. Um, a recognition that he probably didn't have those strengths or, or needed that figure alongside him, had Graham Henry there before as well. So he deserves massive credit for that. Uh, it could have been such a tricky situation. It could end up then sort of forcing someone on him, but he went and, and got Lancaster and uh, it's been absolutely brilliant for the province. Particularly, I suppose, when uh, given the fact that when Lancaster did come in, I know like there are Leinster fans here today, I'm sure not everybody was like, yeah, that's a great acquisition, given how it ended with England. But obviously, Lancaster, I mean, he speaks about the Claremont game last year, with, you know, and you can hear the pain in his voice, and he's very open and honest in how he deals with England's World Cup debacle under him as well. He seems to have a remarkable ability to sort of respond to adversity. And I suppose, <laughs> given Leinster were responding to some sort of adversity at the end of last season, he's a good guy to have around the setup. Uh, as they march towards a, a Champions Cup this year. Yeah, I think he's a quite a caring individual. Like he, he has personal touches with all the players. He's sending them clips, like Johnny Sexton, for example, and sending him those Tom Brady clips, reminding that a guy can play until 40. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but... <laughs> and Joey Carberry won't be too happy with that either. But <laughs> <laughs> Stuck up in Belfast for eight years. Well, yeah. <laughs> But uh, he does, he has that nice, that, that, <laughs> that nice personal touch as well. Um, and yeah, he has bounced back remarkably well. I personally thought the whole media cover, obviously the World Cup went really poorly for them, but um, it's one or two little things that could have changed a couple of those games and, and it could be a very different story. Uh, he's always been a good coach. I thought his record with England was, was pretty decent. Obviously, they never got over the line and won, won that Six Nations, but he brought through the, the complete core of the group that now Eddie Jones has, has benefited from. So Beat the All Blacks as well, which often I think gets overlooked. Yeah, in yeah. How do you around. rate him as a, as a coach? Yeah, I, and I think... He, the other thing he did is he, he's a structural thinker in the game. You know, he puts a lot of thought into X's and O's as well. He, I, I uh, saw him doing a review, a defence review there after one of their games against Ulster. And his thinking on the game is quite structural. And you can see Leinster do play to a fairly structured shape, despite the fact that they have so much talent. Uh, they, they do know what they're doing every step of the way. They're not making it up as they go along. Now, sometimes when they're 30 points up in a Pro 14 game, they do but then it doesn't matter. But in the big games, when they need to be very focused uh, and clinical and exactly know what's required at the time, they do that. And that, that's obviously changed. And that's the precision you're talking about, that when you are smart and you make the right decisions at the right time in the right part of the field consistently, you know, for 80 minutes, whether it's on your own goal line or on their goal line, and in between, you do get that bulletproof look about you mm. because you have that sense of confidence. You're doing this. You do it well. And let's have a fantastic squad now as well. Let's be the, the, the talent is fantastic. But having said that, he's brought that. I think it's a clarity of thought around uh, what they're doing. Yeah. You know, and then the culture side is underpins that. That's for sure. Well, it's interesting to hear a guy like Jamie Heesip say the two best coaches worked with are Joe Smith and him. I think that speaks volumes, but the combination has worked really well while Lancaster is doing that brilliant technical coaching. Um, Danny Kerr was telling a good story about when he came through at Leeds Tykes. They used to, Lancaster used to put like fairy liquid on the ball before the passing sessions to, to test them out. And um, I, I think he does that side of the game, the tactics, as you mentioned. Um, and Leo kind of does the planning a bit more, man manages, tells guys they're dropped. De comes and deals with the media by saying often very very little or nothing at all. Uh, but he deals with that kind of annoying side of the, the, the role that Lancaster probably didn't enjoy when he was with, with England. So it's been a really good, uh, really good combination.